Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear students, in this session, I'm going to talk about phrasal verbs, form and meaning. Okay, so let's have a look on the definition of a phrasal verb. As the name implies, it is phrasal verb. So uh, a phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition. So a phrasal verb is a verb combined with an adverb or a preposition and occasionally or sometimes with an adverb and a preposition. So again, phrasal verb is made up of a verb, a main verb plus a, uh, an adverb or a preposition or sometimes or occasionally with an adverb and a preposition. Let's have a look on the examples here. The price of petrol may go up. It means increase again next week. He fell over. Fell over means to fall to the ground when he was running for the bus. Fell over. She has promised to find out the name of what of that new hotel. She has promised to find out. It means to discover. Find out means to discover or to learn or to know the name of that new hotel. Who is going to look after the children when she goes into the hospital? Look after means take care of. Take care of. If you don't understand the meaning, you can look it up. Look the meaning up, okay? Check it. Check it in the dictionary. Find the meaning in a book. In this case, a dictionary, okay? If you don't understand the meaning, you can look it up. It means to check the meaning in the dictionary. Okay, so here the meaning. Sometimes the meaning of a phrasal verb is very similar to the base form or base verb. And the adverb just emphasizes the meaning of the base verb. This is, in translation, this is called a transparent. So we have different types or different categories of phrasal verbs. We have transparent phrasal verbs and we have opaque uh, phrasal verbs and in between we have semi-transparent or semi-opaque if the meaning is cut clear from the base verb if we know the meaning of the phrasal verb from the base verb it means it is transparent it's very easy to understand however if it is difficult or if it is not similar to the meaning of the words i mean uh, uh, of the phrasal verb it is opaque so sometimes again sometimes the meaning of the phrasal verb is very similar to the base form. That's to say it's very easy to understand. Out of the verbs, out of the words, you can understand the meaning and, ad and the adverb just emphasizes the meaning of the base verb. It is stand up, wake up, save up, hurry up, sit down, lie down, and send off a letter, e.g. blah, 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 blah. On other occasions, the adverb adds the idea of completing the action of the verb. Drink up, finish your drink. Eat up, finish eating, and finish off. But, so this is, in this case, we have transparent phrasal verb. Transparent phrasal verb, which means that the meaning of the phrasal verb is very easy to understand and to know, uh, which is very similar to the meaning of the base form, of the base verb, I mean, like hurry, like wake up, stand up so it's just up here in these cases just emphasizes the meaning okay okay but more often the meaning of a phrasal verb is very different from the base form or the base verb like go up go off go off means explode so it's very difficult to know the meaning of the phrasal verb go off which means of course explode just by looking at the base verb which is go here so the phrasal verb here is very different from the base form. I mean, the meaning of the phrasal verb is very different from the meaning of the base form. Like go up doesn't mean the same as go. Look after is different from look. And look uh, uh, here is also quite different from look up. Like we have look down, look into, look after, look for, look like. So these are called opaque. These are called opaque phrasal verbs. Opaque phrasal verbs are phrasal verbs whose meaning is very different from the meaning of the base form or the base verb, and which is very difficult, which is very difficult to understand from the individual words of the phrasal verb. Okay? 
Here are some more examples of this type of phrasal verbs. I took her a long time. It took her a long time to get over. Uh -huh. Means recover. To get over illness in particular. So it took her a long time to get over her illness. It means to get better or to recover. Okay. He told me to carry on, continue, keep on as far as the traffic lights. Next. I persuaded my wife to give up. Means to stop smoking. So if we hear would like if we would like for example to know the meaning of the phrasal verb it's very difficult for us to know the meaning of the phrasal verb just uh, through the meaning of the base verb okay so i cannot make any sandwiches because we have run out of bread run out means of something means this or that something is finished okay so we have run out of bread we don't have we have no more the bread is finished okay all used so we have no bread in the end my next door neighbor had to come and put out the fire put out the fire means extinguish means extinguish okay put out the fire means extinguish okay i think we are done with this uh let's move to multiple meaning multiple meaning Many phrasal verbs have more than one meaning, so you must be very careful when you see the phrasal verb you think you know or look up the meaning in a dictionary. In the examples marked star, the phrasal verb is much more natural than the explanation in the brackets. So if it is marked like this one, it is more natural, like more natural than the explanation between the brackets. I, um, it was hot, so I decided to take off my jacket. Take off means remove, okay? Take off means remove. Next, I'm always nervous when the plane takes off, leaves the ground, okay? So take off means remove in this context, in another context. So here we have multiple meanings, actually, for the same phrasal verb. It depends on the context. The, the, so the context determines the meaning of the phrasal verb. I'm always nervous when the plane takes off, leaves the ground. We have this business takes off. His business takes off. His business takes off. It means it becomes very successful. Okay? Take off means becomes very successful. Becomes very successful. Okay, the next example is, <clears throat> I don't think I'll get through this report before 5 o'clock. Get through a report means to finish the report. I think she will get through the exam, means pass the exam. Get through an illness, means to recover from an illness, and so on. Okay, pick up. Uh, pick up. I picked up the rubbish. It means I took it from the ground or a low place, from a low place. So pick up something and put it in the pen and put it in the bin. Okay. I had to go to the shop to pick up, collect my photos, pick up the money from the money transfer office and, okay, pick up, collect, take your things, take your stuff from a place. Okay, I had to go to the shop to pick up my photos, means to pick up, means to collect. My alarm clock didn't go off. Before, I mean, actually talking about this, we have many examples actually concerning pick up. Uh, pick up. As a noun is the truck okay i'll go to university today by the pickup okay pick up okay we can say pick your things up or pick up your things both pick your things up and go away pick your things up and go away means okay uh, where can i pick up my ticket where can i pick my ticket up i mean كيف ممكن أسلم من وين ممكن أسلم ال 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 التكت أوكي أوكي pick up means learn pick something up means collect pick pick up some pick something so it has many meanings actually pick up means it has many meanings أوكي the telephone rang and nobody picked up and nobody picked up it means answered أوكي 
He was picked up by the police. He was picked up by the police. We have many more examples. He was arrested. He was arrested. Okay. Pick something up means to take him on your way to a, a specific place. He picked me up on my way to university. He picked me up on my way to university. It means collect also. Okay. So pick up. Right. Pick the rubbish up. It means to, to, to take it from the ground and put it in the bin. Okay. Pick up the photos, pick up the money, pick up the ticket. Means to collect, to go to a specific place, to a specific place and ticket. Okay. My alarm clock didn't go off. It means didn't ring. Good. The bomb couldn't go off at any minute. So go off means explode. The last example, the fish will go off, go bad, if you don't put it in the fridge. Okay? The fish will go off, it means go bad, if you do not put it in the fridge. Thank you for this. Let's move to the exercises. Okay, uh, dear students, as for the exercises, let's go to 16.1. I think this is the only one I'm going to do here. And the rest you can, can be done, I mean, by the students. Fill the gaps to complete the phrasal verb in each sentence. Okay, we went around the school and picked up all the rubbish. I don't think they ever, uh, blah, blah, out how the man escaped. I don't think they ever found out how the man escaped. Number three, this milk smells horrible. I think it has gone off. It has gone off. Number four, do you think I'll get through the exam next week? It means pass the exam. They had a bad relationship at first, but she gets on very well with him now. She gets on. How are you getting on with your studies? How are you getting on with your new friend? So get on with somebody or with something it means to have a good relationship or to do well. If it is with a person, it means to, to, to have a good relationship. But if it is with something, it means to do well in it. Okay? Good. So, um, they had a bad relationship at first, but they, but she gets on very well with him now. So, she is in a good relationship. The price has gone up. The price has gone up. Okay? Uh, three times this year. Uh, I agreed to look after my sister's cat when she goes to France. We can... Carry on until the teacher tells us to stop. Continue means, okay? Why didn't your alarm clock go off this morning? Go off this morning. Ring, it means. I'm afraid this photocopier has run out of paper, but you can you can use the other one in my office. In my office, okay? So you can do just 16.2 alone. And we are done with unit 16. Let's move to unit uh Okay, dear students, now we are going to start Unit 17, Phrasal Verbs, Grammar and Style. Grammar and Style. Phrasal Verbs, as we have already stated, a Phrasal Verb is a verb combined, to, uh, combined with an adverb or a preposition or sometimes with an adverb and a preposition. So this is the definition. Okay, let's have a look. Grammar, intransitive verbs. Um, intransitive, as the main implies, intransitive verbs are verbs that uh, do not need a direct object. Okay? And here, in this case, if we have an intransitive verb, the idea is very easy. We cannot use uh, the object. We, can, we don't have object, and that's why we don't have any problems. But the problem is that when we have a transitive verb, when we have a transitive verb, okay, uh, and this is a verb, I mean, uh, needs an object or a direct object. The idea is whether we can put the uh, object between the verb and its preposition or after the preposition. I'm going to talk about this later. Okay, so with the intransitive verbs, some verbs, some phrasal verbs are intransitive and do not need a direct object. For example, the children are growing up, getting older and more mature, growing up. We don't have an object here. So we don't have any problem. 
the children are growing up. This phrasal verb, the phrasal verb doesn't need an object. The doctor told me to lie down on the bed. Lie down, lie down, verb, adverb, okay? Don't wait out there. Please, come in, means enter, come in. Okay, so on all these examples, we do not have a direct object. I'm going to stay in. It means to stay at home this evening, okay? Stay in means to stay at home. With these verbs, you cannot put another word between the verb and the adverb. Between the verb and the adverb because we don't have uh, objects or direct objects. However, in B, grammar, the transitive verbs, when we say transitive verbs, we mean phrasal verbs. So we have a, a verb plus a preposition or plus an adverb. And in this case, we have an object. Let's see where we can put the object, whether it is between the verb and the preposition or after the preposition. Okay, so, but many phrasal verbs are transitive and do need a direct object. With some of these, you can put the object between the verb and the adverb between the verb and the adverb. So the object comes between the verb and the adverb, the verb in between. The phrasal verb is composed of a verb and an adverb, okay? Here we have an object because we are talking about transitive phrasal verbs. So we have an adverb. The adverb can, the, the sorry, object, sorry, object. We have objects. So the object can be put between the verb and the adverb. However, okay, so, it is between the verb and the adverb. Let's have an example. Put on your shoes or put your shoes on. Tear, turn on the TV or turn the TV on. It's very easy. We can say put on your shoes. So here, your shoes is the object. It can be used after the preposition. Or we can say put your shoes on. So the object, which is your shoes here, is used between the verb and and the preposition on, you see? Okay, turn on TV, turn the TV on. Where is the object? Turn on the TV. The TV here is the object. The TV is the object and it is used after the preposition. It is not used between the verb and it's a preposition. No, it is used after the phrasal verb, okay? Or turn the TV on. We can say turn the TV on. So here the TV, which is the object, is used between the verb and its preposition, okay? So, however, the idea here is that if the object is a pronoun, it must go between the verb and the adverb. We cannot use the pronoun after the phrasal verb. If the object is a pronoun, we cannot use it after the phrasal verb. I mean after the preposition or after the, uh, uh, the, the adverb, okay? A good, a good example is, Okay, again, if the object is a pronoun, it must go between verb and adverb, between verb and adverb. Put them on, put them on. Them, the shoes, the hats, the trousers, so put them on. Them here is the object. Them is the object. And because the object is a pronoun, it is not the trousers, for example, or it is not uh, pajamas, or it is not... Uh, the gloves, the gloves, for example, okay? So them is the object, we cannot use it after the preposition, we cannot use it after the phrasal verb. We say put them on, not put on them, no. It is not correct here. But the idea is that if the object is a preposition, sorry, if the object is a pronoun, it must be used between the verb and its okay, uh, uh, adjacent part or particle, which is the, um, here, the preposition or the adverb, the preposition or the adverb. Put them on, put it on, okay? Check it up, check it up. We cannot say check up it. No, check it up. So it must be, if it is a pronoun, the object. If it is a pronoun, it must be used between or in the middle of, between the verb and its the preposition or its adverb. Turn it on, not turn on it. Okay, note a dictionary will show you if you can put a word between the verb and adverb and adverb. Okay, okay, so let's go to C style, formal or informal. Some phrasal verbs can be used equally in written or spoken English. Okay, so we have different, I mean, levels of language. We have colloquial language, we have spoken language, 
we have standard language. The standard is the most formal, the standard language. Next, we have uh, the uh, colloquial language, and we have the uh, third one is the uh, uh, everyday language, okay? A slang, we can say slang language. So uh, we have um, slang and uh, uh, standard. Standard is the most formal. Slang is uh, not formal, it is informal, everyday language, you can say. And in between, we have the colloquial language. That's it. Sometimes, this is because there is no other easy way to express the meaning of the phrasal verb. So sometimes the same phrasal verb is used formally and informally, okay? Equally in written or spoken English. Okay, R written here means formal, spoken informal. Um, I always wake up early, even at weekends, wake up. So wake up, formal, informal. The car broke down, it stopped working. It means went wrong, stopped working, yes, on the, on the motorway, it broke down. The plane couldn't take off because of the bad weather, because of bad weather, take off, means leave the ground. Thieves broke into, entered illegally, broke into the house and took money, credit cards and all my jewelry. Okay, break into a place means to enter the place illegally, entered by force and illegally, yes, good. Next, informal phrasal verbs, informal phrasal verbs. But most phrasal verbs are informal and are more common in spoken English. So informal phrasal verbs means that those types of phrasal verbs that are informal and that are more commonly used in spoken English. In written English, there is often a more formal word, okay, a more formal word with the same meaning. We had to make up a story. Make up means invent, means create, uh, form uh, from our imagination, from invent, create, make up, fabricate. Exactly, it is fabricate. It is fabricate. Okay. Um, next, next, I can usually get by on about two hundred pounds a week. Yes, get by means manage. I can usually get by on, okay? Get by on about uh, 200 pounds a week means manage. I can manage. I can live on. Manage on means live on also. Manage on, okay? Live on. It means 200 pounds is enough for him to live a week, okay? Uh, for a week. You can leave out question seven. Leave out means omit, okay? I.e., you do not need to do question seven. Leave out, leave it out, leave it out. Can I say leave out it? No. Because the the, the object is a preposition. Sorry, the, the object is a, a, a pronoun and it must be used in or between the verb and its preposition. You can leave it out. You can leave out question seven, okay? You have got a problem. And they asked me to sort it out. I cannot say sort out it. And uh, they asked me to sort it out, resolve it. Sort something out means resolve it, okay? Work it out, work it out, sort it out, okay? Find a solution. Do something about it. Do something about it, okay? So let's move to... Okay, so the exercises say 17.1, um, complete these sentences in a logical way. Of course, these exercises also practice and test some of the phrasal verbs from Unit 16. Uh, so, uh, we would like to complete these sentences in a logical way. I am very good at making up excuses. Okay? For stories, could you lie down on the bed, for example, on the floor? She asked me to turn on the TV, the light, the fire, for Two men try to break into the house, okay, into my flat. Five, we have asked an engineer to come and sort out uh, the problem, the mess. Number six, are you going to stay in uh, tonight on Saturday evening? Number seven, why didn't you leave out uh, the second question, the third question? We have just talked about this, by the way. I'm afraid we broke, we broke down... 
just outside London. I'm afraid we broke down just outside London. Can you get by on your salary? On 70 pounds, on 100 pounds a week? Can you get by? It means manage, okay? I grew up in a small town. I grew up in a small town by the river, by the sea, okay? Um, 17.2, is it possible to separate the two parts of the phrasal verbs uh, in the sentences below? Look at the examples first and use a dictionary to check your answer. Without checking a dictionary, I think it's very easy. Examples, I forgot to get off the bus. I cannot say I forgot to get the bus off. No, no, get the bus off. No, okay. Why did he take off his trousers? I can say, why did he take off, take his trousers off? Why did he take his trousers off? Okay, okay, number one, she decided to carry on working. We cannot say she decided to carry working on. No, he had to put out the fire. He had to put the fire out. We can say he had to put the fire out. Number three, could you turn on the radio or could you turn the radio on? It's okay. So we can say uh, turn on the radio or turn the radio on. Okay, turn on the radio or turn the radio on. I had to lie down for a few minutes. No, I had to lie down for a few minutes. Okay, no, it is not possible. The next one is five. Could you go to the shop for me? We have just run out of coffee. Also, this is not possible. We cannot say run uh, coffee of or out or something like that. I think she made up that story. We can say, I think she made that story up. Okay. Next. I cannot get by on the money my parents give me. We can, oh, yeah, yeah. So it, it's no. The answer is no. I cannot get by on the money. I cannot say I cannot get money by or on the money by. No. So fixed. Okay. Children grow up very quickly these days. This is intransitive, by the way. So we cannot use any, 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 any object or anything between grow and up. I turned off. The light when I went to bed. I turned the light, okay? I turned the light off or I turned off the lights, okay? So it's okay. We can use it both cases, okay? We can use it both, okay? Science. Can we leave out this question or can we leave this question out? It's okay. It's okay, right? Okay. Now let's go to 17, 17.3. 17 Make these texts more informal by changing some of the verbs to phrasal verbs with the same meaning. Okay, so we would like to change the verbs to phrasal verbs, right? Uh, there are three in each text. The cost of living is increasing all the time and I find it quite difficult to manage on my salary, but I think I can probably continue for a few months. We have three verbs here. Increasing, going up. The first one, increasing, increasing, going up. Two, uh, manage. We can say get by, three, um, continue, I think. Yeah, continue means carry on, carry on. Good, carry on. Number two, she told us to enter, but then we had to remove our shoes and I had to extinguish my cigarette. She told us to enter, enter. Good, this is two, come in. She told us to come in, but when we had to remove our shoes, but then we had to remove, remove, take off. Remove, take off our shoes and had to extinguish, put out, extinguish, put out, okay, our cigarettes. Number three, the teacher told the class to invent a story to go with a picture in this book, in their book, and then continue with exercise four. She said, she said they could all omit exercise five. It, it's clear. It's clear. Invent makeup. Invent makeup. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, continue also, carry on, carry on, except for she said she could all, they could all omit, exercise five, omit, means leave out, means leave out, okay, so here we can stop, inshallah, and in the next session we are going to talk about unit 18, thank you very much, bye-bye.